All right, uh, we have uh, probably 15 authors or contributors to this, and uh, they'll be mentioned throughout the the, uh, uh, the talk. All right, uh, next. All right, the uh, role of the Bureau is to advocate and encourage uh, expansion and upgrade of the Space Geodesy Network uh, through, of course, through the, through the services, and then uh, integrate the non-geometric services into the network uh, to provide an opportunity for the services and the standing committees and the working groups to meet, compare notes, talk, share, et cetera, and, and, you know, give talks, EGU, AGU, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and to scope out the network where we stand, where we're going, so where do I think we're going to be, and we also have a task to develop a plan to fulfill the IAG network uh, working with the UNGGIM, uh, and in that case, we have, uh, uh, I should say, Zuhair has sent around a questionnaire, uh, and uh, we have taken the responses and sort of summarized them and uh, posted them uh, on the website. Um, the uh, other thing I might mention is we've, of course, had some certain setbacks in uh, in the network uh, in because of the uh, current situation with uh, with Russia, and um, that you know, cut, caused a, it caused us a lot of a lot of difficulty. Uh, next chart. Uh, I'm often asked about the uh, core network, and um, as you know, the last simulation I think that was done by uh, Ericos was that we needed uh, four twenty four co-location co-located sites uh, and to be um, pr properly distributed around the earth and good, in good, good places to give us good coverage uh, this is where we stand at the moment uh, we indicate here um, the the SLR and the VLBI since these are really the highest priced uh, uh, in, uh, systems uh, and uh, Essentially, all of the stations have GNSS, and uh, and where possible, uh, Doris, of course, participates also. And we talk here about um, in the SLR, we've uh, rated the stations as one and two. One being those that are performing quite well, two being those that are rather marginal but are still working and hopefully will upgrade. And then we've got the two different, uh, the uh, SX and uh, and VGOS stations in. Uh, in uh, the VLBI, and in what you can st still see, big gaps, large gaps that need to be filled. Uh, next, please. Uh, in the uh, ILRS, uh, the main highlight, of course, is the, as with the other um, services, the uh, uh, contributions to the, the ITRF 2020 have been submitted. Uh, in some cases, documentation still has to be done. Uh, the most significant thing in the uh, ILRS uh, is that uh, the, uh, the scale uh, agreement between VLBI and SLR is now down to 0.28 parts per billion. Uh, and this was achieved, I think, a factor of four or five improvements of what we had previously. Uh, achieved mainly through detective work. I mean, a lot of issues were found uh, in scrutinizing the data and uh, and also working with the stations to find out things that hadn't been reported or hadn't been reported properly and uh, have now been incorporated. I point out we have a new station now in, in Tenerife, uh, which is operating in both the red and the infrared, which is very nice. Uh, we got eight or 10 new stations anticipated over the next several years. Uh, delays have been caused by uh, the, the pandemic uh, and also been funding issues and, and, and other, other issues. Once again, uh, still some big gaps, even with these anticipated stations. Next, the uh, VLBI, uh, Dirk reports that uh, the VGOS um, uh, infrastructure build-outs progressing. Uh, they'll have up to 16 VGOS stations by the end of 2022. Uh, so this is a significant expansion. Uh, there's now, uh, there'll be now the first one in the Southern Hemisphere. 
uh, and, hope, and hopefully there'll be more soon. Uh, the correlator capability has been significantly expanded. Uh, it, it, uh, currently, uh, there, there, there'll be seven uh, correlators and where we had uh, just one of them a few years ago. So they'd be able to handle a lot more uh, data. And of course, uh, as with the other, the other services, uh, there are uh, there have been virtual meetings and workshops uh, to uh, to forward the, uh, the the service capability. Uh, next, a lot of progress also in the in the Doris uh, the Doris world. Um, they have been focusing mainly on improving performance. Uh, there are three new Doris stations as we. Can see in Greece, Australia, and, and Chile, uh, there are uh, eight Doris satellites presently, uh, and SWAT will be added to this constellation uh, later on in the year. Uh, significant improvement in their contribution to the uh, to the refer to the reference frame. This is through uh, uh, antenna improvement, uh, fourth generation uh, beacons. Uh, long, stable station operations now improve data processing. So uh, a lot, a lot has happened here, and um, also uh, the uh, the work continues to uh, add the uh, work toward the, um, the scale, adding scale for this. Uh, the next item is the uh, international uh, GNSS service. Um, there have been, uh, once again, there have been workshops and meetings held virtually uh, over the past couple of years due to the, the current uh, situation. Um, uh, the improvement here, also a significant improvement in, but with the addition of scale, uh, it's been, this has uh, been pos made possible through the release of the Galileo uh, satellite phase center values and the receiver antennas calibrated for Galileo. So uh, it's been a big help here. So uh, another important contributor to, to scale. Um, they continue the development of multi-GNSS uh, combinations. And uh, they also point out they have a new quarterly report that uh, folks might be interested in, in uh, looking at to tell you what's happening with the IGS. Next, next chart in the gravity field. Uh, this I won't belabor. Uh, uh, this was uh, Laura discussed this I think uh, earlier and gave uh, details on it. Uh, the implementation of the international height reference system, uh, the new uh, gravitational, the new um, international gravity reference frame, etc. Uh, so a lot of progress is being made here uh, and uh, also stressing the importance of co-locating the gravity field measurements with the, with the, uh, with the, the other geodetic measurements. Uh, so uh, as some stations already have these co-located, but this should be uh, an important issue for the development of new stations and the upgrading of current stations. Next. Uh, a lot of progress again in the uh, permanent service for the mean sea level that uh, Elizabeth reports. Uh, some novel ways to increase sea level data. Uh, they have de uh, detailed uh, an update on uh, tide gauge observations on the GIGOS website. Uh, important co-location with tide gauges with the other geodetic sensors, uh, particularly those that uh, measure land movements. So we can see what's happening not only at the surface, but uh, the land underneath. Uh, a new technique that is uh, moved very quickly is this GNSS uh, reflectometry. In their case, they are, are receiving at ground stations uh, and there's a, uh, a, a portal uh, created as part of the uh, EuroC project to distribute this data uh, from already uh, about 100 and 100, uh, 250 uh, ground receivers. Uh, I'm very impressed by the fact that they have 
uh, organized a program of uh, 3,800 volunteers that have digitized 100 years of tide gauge data uh, from the U.S. Uh, from the U.K. Uh, tide Citizen Science Project. Uh, so 3,800, very very impressive. Uh, next. Um, so I'll now talk uh, quickly about the uh, standing committees. Um, the uh, Plato group um, from D Daniela and Benjamin uh, have been working in simulations. Uh, they're looking at the possibility of uh, extension of the uh, Australian SLR network. Um, as you know, there are already two SLR stations in Australia, and uh, they, but there's still a lot of terrain that could be covered to expand the the geography of the uh, of the GLONASS network of the of the uh, GIGOS network. Uh, also looking at uh, the differential lunar laser uh, opportunities, uh, working with the uh, University at Hanover, uh, VLBI observations. Uh, to Galileo satellites, um, and also uh, future uh, uh, GNSS constellations, uh, you know, coupled with uh, LEO satellites to derive uh, phase centers, again, for the improvement of scale. I also mentioned uh, contributing to the uh, ESA uh, mission genesis, number one, uh, is the geodetic uh, satellite program uh, and the intention is to perhaps launch uh, a satellite every three or four years uh, with the first one being in a few years that uh, might be a a, a uh, something of a co-location in space uh, similar to what we had discussed earlier grasp egrasp etc this is of course becomes particularly important since we are so far behind in <coughs> Uh, so far behind uh, in our uh, ground co-locations. Uh, so um, something definitely would, would hope to see materialize. Uh, the Standing Committee on Missions is next. Um, Roland and CK, uh, these guys uh, advocate for new missions of, of interest to GIGOS, of particular interest to them, of course, is is gravity field as we know and uh, they've been working in the joint uh, ESA NASA international constellation the magic uh, this is the one that measure, measures uses gravity field to measure mass change uh, and uh, on a global scale and the next one uh, is the standing committee on data and information systems and uh, I might uh, mention uh, that um, Martin mentioned uh, earlier metadata. Uh, so I think probably uh, you ought to be in touch, maybe you probably are, with uh, Nick Brown uh, to, uh, uh, to, to see how there may be the, the synergy there. Uh, in this case, uh, this is, a, a, as you know, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a cold. Uh, a global initiative to develop a metadata system for a findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable uh, uh, geodetic data. Um, these guys are working on, I think, the ultimate system. Uh, it is not only for the geodetic services, it is for, for industry, for all industrial, industrial applications, uh, and they have done the sur surveys, um, I think they said something like 100, 100 different uh, possible participants to find out what uh, industry needs for its, for its geodetic requirements. Uh, and the way that would work with uh, us is uh, they're working uh, at the moment with the, with the IGS, and uh, as they uh, work and complete that requirement, uh, they would move on to the other services. So everyone will be included, but uh, the first first step will be the the, the IGS. Uh, uh, work also continues at the CDDIS 
on collection level, uh, you know, metadata efforts uh, reported by, by Sandra. Uh, and the last one is the IERS Working Group on Ground Survey and Co-location. Uh, this is Ryan uh, Hippenstiel. Uh, they are working, uh, reinvigorating their working group through uh, meetings the uh, most recently held in April 5th, uh, sharing thoughts and presentations. Uh, they have attracted new members, uh, new countries. Uh, they have their mem members who have uh, submitted surveys to the IERS for inclusion in the ITRF uh, 2020. Uh, and um, they are also working in the uh, to, uh, to in, the, in the conduct of the surveys, improving protocols and research, uh, researching potential, uh, collecting additional sets of data, et cetera. Uh, but of uh, great interest there, of course, are the observations uh, of, the, uh, 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 of the vertical um, um, using existing, the existing robotic, robotic total stations. My understanding is that those stations have a capability to look at the stars at the same time as they're doing their uh, horizontal uh, measurements and thereby getting the, uh, the, uh, the, the vertical measurement. Uh, and that is it.